All right, welcome back. We're gonna now hear from Ritao Su, CEO and co-founder of Akala on Akala's cross-chain DeFi hub, stablecoin and decentralized sovereign wealth fund. Take it away, sir. Oh, hi everyone. Um, nice to everyone. It's an honor to be in the, in the, in the Polkadot Summit. Um, my name is Ritao Su. I'm one of the co-founders of the Akala network. Today, I'm gonna share what we've built um, on the Akala power chain. Um, and a little background story about our team. Um, we'll be more focused on sharing what we have built um, that will be available for um, Polkadot holders uh, or for, um, for users to tap into. So we have founded um, on 2018. Uh, we have 18 plus contributor and growing. Our team is growing. We have contributor in a pretty much decentralized way. So I'm currently in Auckland. It's very early morning for me. We also have team member in Shanghai, in Albania and in Austin. Um, so the Arcala network is the DeFi hub on Polkadot uh, powering uh, open finance applications. Um, I can still remember when I um, first um, started to work on the substrate and the Polkadot Eagle space back in uh, more than a year ago. Um, the community was still pretty small, but for today, it's quite excited to see this like over six. 6,000 audience uh, in the very first Polkadot Summit. So for today, I'm gonna share like um, what a specialized blockchain or what a specialized finance blockchain would look like on the, um, on the Polkadot network. So the Akala network is a project uh, built on top of the um, Polkadot relation uh, in a specialized way. So by itself, uh, it's a sovereign project network. That means that we have full control or the uh, networks um, Omnus have the, the token holders have full control on the business logic uh, for this particular project. And I think in today's talk, um, we hear a lot of mention about specialization um, and Arcala is one case of that. So we are specialized in finance. Uh, we have um, to take advantage, advantage of the subject framework uh, and we specialize in the finance sector. We have a set of built-in financial primitives. And on the other hand, because we are a full patch blockchain, we are also a platform for smart contract and bridges. But for today's talk, I will be more focused on talking about the built-in financial primitive of the Arcala network and how it's going to help um, token holders, traders, users of the Polkadot network to take advantage of this specialized uh, financial offering. Um, the built-in financial primitive um, in Arcala, I think there's like three core components. Uh, there's the stablecoin pieces, so we have created a decentralized stablecoin. There's also a built-in DEX, which pretty much will very likely going to be the very first DEX to go live on Kusama and, and Polkadot. And there's also a very useful staking derivative um, product. And the reason that we built this financial primitive is because not only because they are useful, but they are also interact with each other, interact with each other in, in a very smooth way. So um, let's talk about the stablecoin pieces first. Um, the stablecoin is um, um, a fully decentralized stablecoin backed by mature crypto assets. So for example, you can collectualize your Bitcoin, you can collectualize your DOT or Kusama in order to generate the stablecoin, which we call AUSD. Um, and since the incorporability is one of the key features of Polkadot, we would assume that the asset available on the whole Polkadot ecosystem would be growing. So the stable coin that you are able to mint using any sort of mature asset would be also growing. By in its core, the stable coin is trustless and is secure by the relay chain. Um, so this is the specialization or the sheer security of Polkadot uh, comes into play. So on the Arcala shards, we fully customize, take advantage of the substrate framework to fully customize and build this stablecoin logic. Um, but the security or the trustless nature is governed by the relay chain. Um, by tapping into a relay chain, that also means the stablecoin that will be minting will be available not only within the Arcala power chain, the stablecoin can be also circulated into other power chain um, and being used as a currency, as a stable currency for other power chain projects. Uh, it also means that other assets that are available on other projects, um, for example, the um, Polka BTC uh, that built by the Intel AG, um, there's also RAM BTC um, we've been working with, all those assets will be available uh, on the Arcala shot that can be used at some stage as capital to maintain more stable coin. So that is the idea of like um, a, a decentralized stable coin built on top of Polkadot. Um, when, we took, when we look at the substrate framework, we look at like how 
um, since we have the full control of the business logic, we look at like how we can actually fine tune this full control, take advantage of this full control and fine tune this stable coin. Um, there's actually a number of innovative ways that we invented um, when we were designing this essentially stable coin. You will see that in the upcoming demo. Also, there's the built-in decentralized DEX uh, exchange. Um, it's pretty much an AMM type of curve type of exchange. It also serves as a unified source of liquidity in the, in the in our power chain, in the Arcala network. That means that the liquidity uh, on this DEX is not only can be used for trading, the liquidity in this DEX can be also used for liquidation when there's a risky position it could need to be liquidated. Uh, also, there's also one very inno innovative feature that comes into play that you are able to pay gas fee in any short of token simply by uh, tapping leverage into this built-in decentralized exchange, which I'm going to show in the demo um, very, very soon. Also, there's a uh, staking directed product uh, that comes into play as one of the core offering of the Arcala Financial Shot. Uh, it's simply a trustless staking pool. Um, so that means that dot holders or Kusama holders can simply deposit um, their dots or Kusama into this staking pool and in exchange get L dots or LKSM as the representation of their stake assets. The stake assets uh, will be um, liquid, so means that as your, the asset itself is as good as the original asset, but it's liquid. It's no longer bound to the 28-day or 7-day unbounding period of the relation. Um, even better, the, um, the directive can be also used as a character. That means that uh, when you are minting stablecoin using DOTS or, or KSM, you don't have to essentially give up the staking rewards that otherwise wouldn't be um, it simply doesn't quite work out if you want simply want to lock up lock up dots or lock up ksm so you have to give up the opportunity cost so if we imagine like all these three pieces uh coming to play we can start to see a picture of like how the inter blockchain money lego are coming to play or how the inter blockchain or multi-chain future that we imagined i can already think about quite a number of stories that are um, enabled by tapping into this um set of financial primitive for example um for a bitcoin holder um, someone can, uh, a Bitcoin holder can simply capitalize his Bitcoins, take out a loan against their Bitcoin position and borrow some L dots, essentially gaining stock staking rewards without liquidating Bitcoin. Um, and since this is a platform itself, someone can come in and cover smart contract, uh, maybe do a sort of like the staking reward directive to accure dot staking reward in Bitcoin simply by deploying a set of smart contract. And there's many, many more other possibilities simply by tapping into the financial primitive that we built for this power chain. So this is pretty much um, what we have built um, so far. And I think um, without further ado, we have a fully live um, test net for the part, perhaps been running for the past three to five months is, uh, has gained a lot of um, community support. So I'm actually going to go through um, a an, an very thorough walkthrough of how the Arcala network looks like from the user's perspective. So this is the Arcala um, front-end app. Uh, you can think about this is like sort of like the super dApp into the Arcala blockchain. Uh, it's one of the en entry points to, to gain access to the Arcala um, shot. Um, on the first tab, you can see um, it's pretty much your wallet and or a number of assets that you will have access to. I can simply transfer my AUSD to other accounts, um, or I can check out my balances. I can transfer my L dots, which is already uh, liquid. Um, it's pretty much my stake derivative. I can transfer it to someone else. I can also um, get into the um, stable coin section. As you can see, um, this is like the asset supported by the Arcala shard that you can you are able to use to make stable coin. So. I already have a position open with RAM BTC. Um, you can see that I've collectualized 0.05 RAM BTC and I already have a bro position of like $500. I can essentially borrow like maybe 10 more dollars um, by confirming this transition using the MetaMask, uh, using the Polkadot.js, which is the MetaMask equivalent on the, on, on the Polkadot network. So you can see how fast it performs. And this, and this is live on our uh, fully pledged uh, test net. Uh, I can obviously create other, um, um, use other crypto to generate stable coin, for example, dots, or I can use L dots as to generate stable coin as just a prescribed um, that you essentially, you will be gaining um, staking reward while taking out a loan. So this is how you make the stable coin. Now, once you have the stable coin, the other section that we have in this building um, um, Arcala Shah is the decentralized exchange. So pretty much I can exchange 
my AUSD to any other asset that will be available on the Arcala chart. So in these cases, I can exchange my AUSD for some RAM BTC. Um, I'm going to click swap. And this is an AM type of exchange. I can simply um, swap $10 more um, of um, spend ten dollars for AUSD and receive a little bit of RAM BTC. And as you see that this is a trustless uh, decentralized exchange where as well. So pretty much everyone can add liquidity and withdraw liquidity. The LP token is also represented uh, in the wallet. You can transfer your um, your your positions in the liquidity pool to someone else. Um, by by itself, this decentralized exchange is already quite useful. It's um, tradable, it's um, efficient, it's fast. But as I mentioned, this is also the unified source of liquidity. So imagine that if there's a risky position in the long section that need to, need to be liquidated, um, there is a, there's a, um, um, you can think about this source of liquidity from the DEX can be served as a liquidation um, source of liquidity as well. So if a risky position needs to be liquidated, there's actually an auction worker that runs as a scheduled event. I will compare the auction price uh, with the, 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 the DEX price. And if the scheduler find out that the DEX price is better, the, liquid, the, the position will be actually liquidated through the DEX. And that means that liquidity provider in the DEX is not only earning the liquidity provider award, they are also earning the liquidation penalty. So this is how we build a number of um, protocols and let them interact with each other. This is how we take advantage of this fully customized blockchain and, um, and take, take it to the next stage um, and see how this stuff actually work together. The final pieces of this built in um, per, um, um, financial primitive in our shot is the liquid staking. By itself, it's quite useful. So if you want to stake, uh, simply you just need to swap dot to L dot. L dot itself is like the representation of the pool um, and it's more of like an U bailing token of your dot. It's trustless and it's liquid. So I'm going to deposit one more dot into the pool to gain a little bit more of L dots. So as long as you are holding to L dots, you will be gaining the uh, staking reward and you will be able to enjoy the staking reward while able to freely transfer your, 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 your stake dot asset. The, even better, you can use the L dots as a collector to generate a loan. So you no longer need to give up the opportunity cost of like um, locking up pen vanilla dots instead of L dots. Um, to unstake or to redeem your L dots, there's actually a number of ways for you to redeem your L dots. There's, you can just as, uh, as a swap back, uh, you can swap back the L dot to dots immediately. Um, some fee will be involved because um, in the pool, we actually set aside of some dots for free. So you have this immediate redeem. There's also this advanced feature. If you prefer not to pay the fee, there's the immediate, um, there's a number of like advanced redeem feature. You can say that I'm happy to redeem my L dot and wait for the standard 28 days uh, unbounding period. In that cases, um, there's not uh, much fee are required. But if you really need, need that dot now, and if you really need the liquidity of a Valina dot uh, in your hand, at the instance, uh, there's also always a set of um, dots aside uh, in the uh, in the pool for you to redeem. And overall, um, if, if the fee um, being paid by the redeeming of the inst uh, the free dots um, generating is um, uh, is uh, average to uh, is is um, behave or perform as good as the staking reward, the over pool performance would be. Uh, will be equal or better than the, otherwise you will just stack with the Polkadot network. So this is the a number of um, protocol that we built together to make this um, financial shot uh, and fine tune for any sort of financial education to, to happen on, on our particular shot. And obviously we also have the governance pieces built in. Um, this is um, really close to finish. There's like the number of councils that oversee uh, all different sections of the um, of the app. That's the early talk about um, the early early topic that a lot of talk about in the power chain section. Like each power chain itself is also so thin, and so each power chain will have their own governance process as well. Uh, we also recently released uh, release an, an 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 article about the Oracle that we are able to build. Um, and cooperate with a number of teams to build an open Oracle or gateway. Um, again, we are taking some sort of advantage of the substrate's fully um, customizable functionality here. So the Oracle fitting price into this particular shard in the Akala shards is not only free, but the Oracle fitting is parallelized. That means it's no longer a very counterintuitive intuitive, um, experience. Like if you want to fit the price into Oracle, you are not competing for the other 
uh, transaction usage of like the trading activity or things like that. So um, by designing this way, um, the Oracle price fitting is more frequent and it's more safe. So pretty much this is like an overall walkthrough uh, of the um, of the Arcala front end deck. Um, let's get back to the slides. And in the past three months, or the three to five months, we have run to a number of, um, of community events. We host a number of campaigns, and we are able to um, acquire a very, very uh, good community following. Currently, there's 30,000 community members spread across our Telegram channel, our Discord channel, our WeChat channel. Um, there's um, 40,000 side transactions on testnet, um, and I think overall there's like 30,000 account created on the testnet. And this is um, we are able to fortunate enough to be able to acquire a um, very very great uh, community following. We also have been partnered with quite a number of projects and in building this uh, financial shot together. There's pretty much uh, all the permanent project in the Polkadot Eagle space. We also have backers like staking backers, uh, funds, any sort of support that, that's a belief in our decentralized vision of a, of, of a, of a network fine tune for finance. We're able to fortunate enough to acquire this set of um, um, partners. Um, and as you can see, um, the, the stuff that we build um, today is not only be useful uh, for any trader or consumer, it can be also useful for developers to take advantage to as well. So there's a number of ways that developers can deploy or can integrate with Akala. On the most deeper integration, developer can deploy smart contract on the Akala shards, take advantage of what it builds. For example, the AUSD, the L dot, all those would be like available on the smart contract level. There's also developer of a part of power chain can tap into the Arcala AUSD or L dots simply by utilizing the inter um, inter shard communication by tapping into the um, the stable coin the token that we're offering. We have an, an wider ecosystem integration. And um, one of the projects that we've been working very closely um, is the um, uh, the RAM project. So they have been um, working very closely with the Arcala project from the very beginning, they have built a bridge from the RAM VM to the Arcala shot so that uh, RAM BTC or Ethereum can be teleported through RAM VM to the Arcala shot. Um, I would like to invite um, the uh, CTO or co-founder of the RAM project, um, Lon, to give out a guest speech. Um, and since Lon is actually in Australia, and I think it's now 3 a.m. for him, so this is a pre-recorded message um, from RAM. So I'm going to... Stop share my screen so um, we can play the video. Hey everyone, my name is Long and I'm the Chief Technology Officer at the REM Project. Here at the REM Project, uh, we're building trustless, decentralized and permissionless technology that enables uh, interoperability between various blockchains. We've started with Bitcoin on Ethereum uh, and since we launched in May of this year, 2020, we've done more than $1.3 billion in volume and have more than $300 million in total locked value. Uh, and we support Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, uh, and Zcash on Ethereum, but most of this volume comes uh, from Bitcoin at the moment. Uh, and what this enables uh, users and developers to do is to access Bitcoin uh, in a permissionless way in their DeFi applications. Uh, and this obviously has, has many different advantages, but one of the reasons why uh, I'm excited for it uh, and to discuss it in the context of Polkadot is that we'll also be bringing Bitcoin and these other assets uh, to the Polkadot ecosystem through Akala. Uh, and what this means is that users will be able to take Bitcoin, transfer it to a Bitcoin address, and have that Bitcoin appear as a token on the Akala network. Uh, and here, users are gonna be able to do a, a bunch of different interesting things. One of the most obvious initial use cases is that users are gonna be able to take Bitcoin and use it to create a USD, a synthetic representation of the US dollar is backed by Bitcoin, so you can sort of still keep custody and still keep uh, ownership of your Bitcoin, uh, but convert it temporarily or for as long as you want into a, a synthetic uh, US dollar representation called AUSD. And you can use that to interact with the rest of the DeFi ecosystem that's gonna be living on Akala and the rest of the Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, something else that you can do is that there's gonna be a whole bunch of different Bitcoin representations on the Polkadot network most likely. Uh, I'm aware of at least two other implementations. What you'll be able to do is you'll be able to take uh, all these different forms of Bitcoin and put them into a stable pool. Uh, this is something that exists in other blockchains today. Uh, one of the most prominent ones being Curve on Ethereum. And this is where we've been seeing, you know, the most volume uh, for Bitcoin on Ethereum. Uh, and we expect that we'll see similar things uh, on other chains uh, as well. Uh, of course, you can also take Bitcoin and you can use it to uh, 
uh, bonded as collateral uh, to take out a loan. Uh, and you know you can do this in a uh, trustless sort of DeFi native way where you've got an over collateralized loan uh, that gets automatically liquidated. Uh, and again, you can take that Bitcoin and uh, you can take this loan. And you, one of the interesting use cases, you can then use uh, the, the loan that you've taken to go buy more Bitcoin and you repeat this process and you can take uh, and through that, you can sort of leverage your exposure in a fully uh, trustless and decentralized way. Uh, one of, uh, you know, there's endless opportunities really uh, for how you might want to use Bitcoin in the Polkadot uh, ecosystem and, and in Akala itself. One of the things that really excites me about inter-blockchain interoperability is the fact that we, can't, we can do more than just bring Bitcoin and other assets to the Akala ecosystem. We can also bring Ethereum and Ethereum assets to the Akala ecosystem but we can also bring Akala and Akala assets out to other, into, uh, in, uh, sorry, we can also bring uh, Akala assets out onto other blockchains uh, and use those assets in DeFi that already exist today uh, in these networks. So for example, you could take AUSD that you generate on the Akala network, you could send it out of the Akala and Polkadot ecosystem entirely, and you could send it to Ethereum or Binance Smart Chain, which are two chains that RenVM already supports today. Uh, and you could use your US uh, dollar representation there in existing applications, whether that be DEXs, whether that be lending platforms, or whether that be applications that, that don't even exist yet uh, and pop up in the future. So one of the really powerful things about RenVM and why it's so useful to these different ecosystems is that it's completely agnostic to the kind of application uh, that you might be working with. So while there are other forms of interoperability that do exist, they're typically very specific to a very specific use case. They either only support a, a small set of chains or they only support a small specific set of applications. With RenVM, you can support any application that you might build. Everything that exists today is supported and anything that you might build in the future is supported. Uh, and there's no restriction on what kind of chain can be supported. So by integrating RenVM with Akala, what we're really opening up for that whole ecosystem is access to existing DeFi, both being able to bring it to Polkadot, but also being able to get access to it uh, where it is natively. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the reason that we're interested to see uh, the Akala network go live and why we've been working very closely with our team to support Akala in the RenVM. Thanks. Awesome. Um, great. Um, I think it's great to hear from um, the project that have been working very closely, the RAM project. Um, great speech. Um, thanks, Lon. So, um, in, in, in fact, um, I'm gonna actually show um, how um, the power of a um, fully customized network would look like. So I have a brand new account uh, in my in my dev, and this is a very common scenario. This is like a RAN BTC user might experience. So let's say they are RAN BTC users. Um, they minted 0 0.1 RAN BTC um, by through by by transferring the Bitcoin into the RAN VM address, and then they will be getting 0 0.1 bit 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 uh, 0 0.1. Uh, RAM BTC minted on the Akala shot. And this is a very common scenario. So you have some RAM BTC in your wallet, but you have no other tokens. Um, on other um, blockchains, um, or on very similarly on, on the other smart contract platform out there right now, you might have to acquire some ACA or some native token to be paid as gas fee. But in our cases, because we're able to leverage the full power of the full customization, essentially, um, the system would allow uh, you to use RAMBDs as gas fee. So I can freely go there uh, into the dev and say that I'm willing to characterize my RAMBDC. So probably I'm going to characterize 0.1 of it and take out like a like $200 loan. I'm going to go next and help you with that. Um, sign for the transaction. And what happened under the hood is that the system will be liquidating a fraction of my RAMBDC in exchange um, for the native token and pay for the gas fee. But essentially, from the user's point of view, I'm using RAM BTC as gas fee when transacting uh, in this shot. And this is a power that you are able to do if you have full control of the business logic in the blockchain level. Um, that also means if you have AUSD and if you want to transfer AUSD, it is viable for you to pay AUSD as gas fee rather than paying some native tokens. So I think this is already one of the huge uh, user experience lift. Uh, it might be extremely beneficial for a foreign um, user to tap into this um, into this Akala SHA and can able to start transacting, uh, transacting immediately. So this is the power that we can start to see and we can see a lot more um, 
a super user-friendly feature being like this um, um, flexible fee feature that we've implemented being rolled out one by one. Um, so this is pretty much um, to demonstrate like how a fully specialized uh, blockchain would look like as a glimpse of like how it might look like. So I think this is pretty cool. And so let's talk about um, the launch plan, like how um, are we set for launch? So first is that the, the Mandela testnet that I just demonstrated is live. Everyone can go ahead and give it a play right now. It's risk free. Um, there's also a faucet in our Discord channel. You can get some test tokens to play with. Our plan is to launch our network in both Kusama and Polkadot. So we're going to go live on Kusama first as a canonry network for the Arcala network. And once um, the Polka, Polkadot has the project functionality, then we will go live on Polkadot. Um, the, 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 the development status of the Alcala shard is pretty much like we have finished the development. Uh, we are just fine tuning, optimizing um, all the related pieces. We have went through a number of security audits. Um, I think we just released a security audit from SR Labs and we have another security audit that's coming up as well. So in terms of feature wise, we are ready and just waiting for the power chain functionality to go live so we can launch. So how do we launch these networks? So we launch the network by going through the power chain list offering. So essentially, in a nutshell, the power chain list offering is like the auction process of like a dot holder or a Kusama holder can simply stake um, their dot or their Kusama exchange for the native network token of the Karura or the Akala network. It is a way to give up distribution. It is also a way to have community ownership. But I think the most important factor uh, of this um, power chain list offering is it is a lossless form of participation. The dot or the Kusama they were used for staking or to stake to bond the power chain will be returned to you upon the end of the power chain lease. So um, you are essentially not giving out the dot to the project. The project only get a shard or get a, a slot to transact with. So we think this is like a new paradigm shift in terms of like how you push up a network. It not only uh, give great shot of uh, great sense of ownership, uh, a much safer way for uh, for holders to participate. It also hold a, hold the a project accountable to deliver what they promised. So we think this is um, a very cool way to boost the network. We will be joining the power chain lease offering on both Kusama and Polkadot once the power chain auction uh, functionality has been ena is, is enabled. Uh, the best way to follow up um, and to um, to get notified when we are plan to do power chain list offering and the details is to follow our Twitters. I would, I think it's getting really, really close. So make sure that you follow our Twitter to make you to stay notified. Um, I'm, and I'm not sure if I have time to go through the DTSWF. I think that's probably was another talk, but upon this, um, after this financial printer that we built, we also built a DAO that's on top of everything. So the DAO is to manage uh, surplus and it's also a unique design of the economic model to make sure that our power chain through a number of power chain lease offering can reach to self sustain bonding. And once the DAO has uh, sufficient asset to bound for itself, the DAO can also bound for other power chains and we will be very soon to talk about that. Um, there's a difference between AUM and TVL. Um, but I think for today, this is just a hint of like what's coming up once we go live, what's where the, where, where the, the unique play of the Arcala ecosystem will look like. So that's pretty much the, um, the, the talk to share with the community, like what we have built um, so far. And thanks everyone for, for joining us um, in these sessions.